All right, good evening. Hope everyone's doing good. Hope you've had a great week and I hope you've had some time to uh, prepare with the Lord your heart. Uh, remember, I'm asking everyone to um, not get in survival mode, but really begin to get your heart in revival mode. I think that's going to be a very important part of what happens in the next few weeks for us as a church. I want to take tonight just a few minutes to mention a couple announcements and then we'll begin in our Bible study this evening. Uh, first of all, don't forget that we do have Sunday evening Bible study at 6 o'clock and we have Sunday morning Bible study at 11. Uh, during the Sunday morning time, we do have a time of worship. Uh, Sunday evening is just Bible study only. Both of those are on YouTube and Facebook, so we want to encourage you to join us. Um, this being our first Wednesday night for adults, we're going to have these at 645, except uh, on 645 on Wednesday, except next Wednesday. And the reason why is um, once a month, the first Wednesday of the month, we're going to have drive-by prayer time. I want to encourage you to come and be a part of that time. That'll take place at 6 o'clock at the church, 6 to 7. <clears throat> we'll have a drive-by prayer time, 6 to 7 on Wednesdays. Um, we won't have Bible study tonight, so we have drive-by prayer time. The rest of the time, we'll have about a 20-minute Bible study together um, on Facebook and YouTube. Um, Wednesday nights, we have Zoom time, which is a video conference time with our students. I want to encourage you to be a part of that time with the students. Um, if you need details on the codes, get with me or call me at the church office or email me at drshanenbc at att.net. Um, if you need help in any way, please contact us at the church as well. We'd love to help you and encourage you and uh, just enable you to get the things that you need. Uh, you can call us at the church, 803-534-1199. Uh, there is a kids' time that we have. It's on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Uh, and Lexus and myself are a part of that time, Saturdays at 11 a.m. That's on my personal Facebook page, uh, Shane Stutzman. We want to just encourage you to be a part of that. It's just a few minutes long with a... A little story from God's Word and then <clears throat> a challenge and a little prayer time together. So we hope you'll be a part of that as well. If you want to be a part of online giving, you can do that by going to our website, www.nbc, the number four, Christ.org. <clears throat> when you go there, you'll go to the giving page and there's a blue button on the giving page. Click on that and follow the instructions and you can be a part of giving. If you want to give on a regular basis and just come bring by the church, you can do that as well during our normal, normal office hours. Uh, our college group has a Bible study, and that time is <clears throat> at 7 p.m. And if you need details on that, again, email me and we can connect you. Now, June 7th is going to be a big day for us as a church. We've got a couple things coming up on June 7th. June 7th is a time where we're going to uh, look at live services for the church again. Now, it's not going back. It's not going to be exactly like what it was in the past, but June 7th is our, our kickoff day. Here's how we're looking. <clears throat> You'll be getting a letter in the mail uh, from us. <clears throat> excuse me. Letter in the mail from us at the church. It'll give you some details on what's coming up. <clears throat> As you look at it, if you have questions, please call the church. We can go through it and make sure everything's very clear because we want it to be very clear. But what the plan is, is at 9.30 on Sunday mornings, we'll have one service. And then at 11.15, we'll have a second service. These services are going to last about 45 minutes. Um, the first service, we're aiming to have people who are 60 and above. If you come and you're not 60 and above, it's okay. But we're aiming to do that so that we can have the right number of people. We're trying to have 30% of what our sanctuary holds in those services. Uh, the way to make that happen is, is that, that means about 75 per service. Uh, the balcony will not be open, and uh, we're going to ask everyone to enter through the, uh, the doors at the front of the church, the, the, the main doors, come through there, and we're going to exit by the basketball court. Uh, we're not going to have small group yet or, or Wednesday night. We're, just, we're slowly moving in this so that we can follow through with the guidelines that have been set down uh, through, through other people as well as just some prayed through times with doctors and, and just talking through to how, how to best make sure everybody's safe. Now there is some requirements, make sure you look at your list. It'll give you very clearly what we need to do. And if you have any questions, please call me at the church because we want to make this a very powerful time. Now this will just be phase one, our first step in that. 
and we hope that it'll be uh, very clear to you on paper but if not don't hesitate to call and please um, just know that we're trying to do the best we can we're working really hard to make sure that this is going to be a safe environment for everyone and that's so important to make sure that we don't make steps backwards we want to keep moving forwards so our plan is to june 7th to have our first step um, and it'll be a very powerful day so don't miss that day um, and yes there'll be two services the two just just powerful times we will still have our sunday night but that will be online only and then <clears throat> wednesday night will be like this and then the first Wednesday of the month, we'll have our drive-by prayer time. Until we get to get a little bit stronger and as a nation and, and begin to move forward. We don't want anybody to be sick. We just want to be safe. And uh, just be praying with us about that. Uh, we're, we're going to do the best we can. The church will be clean between uh, both morning services and after the morning services. So it'll be a very, very safe environment for both groups. Um, we're going to begin this time with a word of prayer. Then we're going to have just a little time in the Word as well. Pray with me if you will. Dear Lord, I love you, and I thank you for this day. I thank you for giving us this time together, and I thank you for what you have for us tonight in the Word. And Lord, I just pray that you keep us safe and you remind us of the power that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for the opportunity we have to study in your Word, and thank you for what you have for us throughout this week and beyond this week. I love you, and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Tonight, I want you to think with me about the idea of a cure for anxiety. Um, I've noticed the last little bit, there's a lot of us who, who uh, just begin to get real anxious about things or get real concerned and begin to worry about what's to come. Uh, George Mueller uh, had this statement. I like it a lot. It says, the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith, and the beginning of true faith is the end of anxiety. Now, you might hear those words and you might think, well, Pastor Shane, I'm, I, I believe I'm a real Christian. I'm just a little nervous and concerned and worried about all what's to come or what's going to come next. Um, maybe, maybe you're concerned on, on uh, what's going to happen tomorrow because everything we've gone through as a nation and a community and even as a church, uh, it, it can be a, a time where you get a little concerned about what happens tomorrow. Um, some have even allowed this virus stuff to control each and every step of our lives. Within that, we've got to remember who's in control. And we know the Lord's in control, but it's, it's, it's something that you got to go back to on a daily basis. So tonight, as we look, we're going to look at Philippians chapter 4, uh, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Philippians chapter 4, uh, and we're going to look at verse 6 and 7. And as we look at those verses, I, I believe it... it it tells us not to worry and that's an easy thing to say but not always easy thing to do and so what can we really do to find a cure to all the anxiety that surrounds us today and as we look at that <clears throat> you know it can become where our worries uh, begin to really radically change our life in such a way where it, it just becomes a big part of who we are and if we're not worried does that mean we really don't care that's not the case either um, so tonight, let's look, Ephesians, or excuse me, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. It says, don't worry about anything. <laughs> wow, really easy to read, but not always easy to do. But don't worry about anything, but in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Now, tonight, when you think about that, look at what it says here with the area of an average person and anxiety. 40%, and this is based on the average person who has anxiety, 40% of their anxiety is focused on things that will never happen. 30% is focused on things that happened in the past and can't be changed. So 70% of the things that people worry about are things that are never going to happen. And then secondly, things that are in the past that you can't change. Then 12% is things uh, focused on things uh, about criticism by others that mostly are untrue. So now we're at 82% of things that really are way out of our hands. Then 10% is focused on health, but, but it, stress makes it a lot worse, which is um, even, even another issue in itself. And then 8% is about the real problems that we're going to face. So as you look at that, 
if we begin to worry about things that we can't control or things that we can't hold, uh, hold on to and, 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 and even really do much about, then we're putting a lot of energy in something that, that will not be a lot of help to us. So in our passage tonight, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, here's a couple things that it says to us that helps us not to worry. First of all, it says to pray. Now, some people say, well, prayer is a last resort. It is not a last resort. It should be a, a, at least one of the first. It, it, it should be one of the only things that we're able to really do to relinquish power in our life and get connected to the one who can do some great and mighty things in our life. It, it's getting ourselves in tune with the Lord's plan for our life. And prayer is so vital. We, we, we need to let go of some of those things. And it, it really happens when we, when we um, go to the Lord and just say, Lord, I love you. I, I need you. I can't do this on my own. I need your help. Then the second thing it tells us in verse 6, it talks about petitions. Petitions with thanksgiving. Now, uh, there are people who sign petitions and, and, and there are things that you're for or against. But petitions with thanksgiving. Things that we're saying that we're very thankful for. Uh, thanking God for the time that he's allowed us. Thanking uh, others, but, but especially in our passage tonight, it, it really encourages us to thank the Lord for what he's done. Sometimes all we can see is the loss or the things that we want. Um, but what about the things that God's given us? Have you stopped to just thank him today for what he's given you? Have you thanking, uh, thanked the Lord for uh, the ability to have light? I mean, that, that, that's a great thing to be able to have light in your home. Um, have you thanked the Lord for uh, the, the health that you have? Have you thanked the Lord for your family? If we were to start tonight and just begin to say, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for all you've done, we, we would not miss a beat or a second for a number of days if we were truly got our heart with, with the petition to say, thank you, Lord, thank you for what you've done. And when you begin to thank people uh, in general, for what they've done for you, it turns your heart towards them. But if we thank the Lord for what he's done, it really connects our heart towards him. See, being thankful to others is, is, a, is a good thing, but being thankful to the Lord really changes our hearts and really takes our, our minds off of things that we worry about, but even minds off of ourself. Um, and so it, it, the focus begins to move from, from anxiety and worry to thanks and connection. And so when you connect with the Lord, uh, he's the one who takes care of things. When you connect with him, watch what happens. Watch what he's going to do because it will change you. I um, heard a story that took place in 1995, and I'm just going to read it because it's really good. A fishing boat sank in rough cold waters off of Vancouver Island, leaving two men in a life raft tied to a sinking boat only by a nylon rope. Neither had a knife to cut the rope, and uh, had the ship sunk, it would have pulled the boat and the men down with it. For an hour, the two men alternated chewing the rope. Minutes before the ship sank, the men finally chewed through the rope and survived. Now think about this. We, we think that we got a lot of things to worry about. And remember, a big chunk of what people worry about, 92% of what people worry about, are things from the past, things that they can't handle, uh, criticism from others, uh, poor talk from others, um, all, all that kind of stuff. And, and we're missing out. Look, can you imagine being on a life raft in the middle of a cold water, knowing that you're gonna die very soon, and you realize what was getting ready to take place? These guys took their mouth and started gnawing on nylon rope to break that rope free from that boat because they didn't want to go down with the sinking ship. Well, the illustration is really true for uh, what happened to those guys, but it's really true what happens to us too. Because if we stay connected to anxiety, the sinking ship, then we're going to miss out on what God has for us. And so uh, we might not have a rope that we can gnaw on to let go, of, but we need to let it go. And we need to let it go by going to the Lord and saying, Lord, I need you now. Those prayers that we lift to him. Lord, I need your help right now. And then going back to him and saying, Lord, I just want to thank you for what you've done. Petitions of thanksgiving. People, if we, if we would just stop and just uh, make petitions, I want to make a petition or being thankful that the Lord has protected me today. How many of us could sign it? Or I want to make a petition that, that the people of Orangeburg that were able to eat today, I just want to thank the Lord in, in a petition, or if you'll sign it. Um, 
but instead we, we let all these worries, um, these, these things that make us very anxious, and they become our petition. I want to make a petition to close this, or I want to make a petition to go against that. And, and we miss out on the, the purity of the, the relationship of just being thankful. Just stop and thank the Lord for what he's done for you today. Stop and say, Lord, it really can make you feel better. Um, when you get wrapped up in all the negative, it, it can take uh, the joy out of your life. And so get back to the place where you're thanking, 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 and do it again. Um, but then in verse 7, it also talks about peace. So how do we find peace in, in our struggles when we're dealing with anxiety at the same time? Um, it, it, it comes back to that idea of surpassing. Uh, when you realize what you've been given from the Lord, it really can give you a peace. I remember when Lori and I were going through counseling, um, one of the pastors that was doing the counseling for us set us down and he talked to us about getting some alone time together. And he said, you might not have a lot of money, so you might have to go share a milkshake together. And if you have to share a milkshake together in the middle of a restaurant, you could just be alone together right there and enjoy that alone time and realize what the Lord's been giving you. And you might have to share, you, you might even be able to splurge and get two straws, he said. Now there's been some times in our life, in our marriage, that, that those two straw milkshakes were pretty helpful. Um, and you know, we weren't alone. There were people all around us. We weren't isolated. There were people around us in the same restaurant eating, but we weren't worried about what they were doing. We were focusing on time together. And you know, in the midst of all kinds of craziness that this world has to offer, uh, we can have a surpassing peace because we connect with the one uh, who, who, who really holds the whole world in his hands. Uh, as kids, you know, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. And when we begin to think about that song, it, it's an exciting time when you're a little kid. But, but we for, for some reason, we forget about the surpassing peace that comes from the Lord. He's got the whole world in his hands. He doesn't just have Orangeburg. He doesn't just have my street or your street. He has the whole world in his hands. And when we realize that, again, peace uh, comes. It, it's not just, um, it does give us a different perspective, but it's not just a different perspective. According to uh, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, the cure for anxiety is to take our prayers and petitions and find peace within our heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Is it really that simple? Because it's not just a change of perspective or looking at it. Uh, some people in the news media, they'll say, oh, we have to have these different angles that we're going to look at media. And so by the time you hear the story, sometimes it, it it's almost like a different story. It's like, really? Were you at the same place? I'm sure many of you have been to a funeral of somebody that uh, was a loved one or a friend, and you go to the funeral and somebody talks about the person who had passed on, and you think, wait a minute, did I even know that person? And it's different angles that they look at that person's life. Well, here's the point. It's not just a different perspective that has taken place when we connect with the Lord and Savior of the world. It's not just looking at life from a, a different way. It, 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 it's connecting our prayers our petitions to the Lord in such a way that those connections really bring us peace. So how does that happen? We, we, I believe that it's because we find real purpose. Because when we connect with the Savior of the world, the one who has the whole world in his hands, then what we've done is we've, we've gone to the one who really will help us find peace. We're not, listen, if you're relying on me to fix everything in the world, I have a hard time fixing a motor at my house or I have a hard time fixing uh, uh, changing the oil in my car I have to take it to somebody so they can do it but when I go to the Savior of the world the one who could take care of all things I really realize that there is real purpose and hope in Jesus Christ it's not a change of perspective as much as it is a change of purpose because when we connect with the one who gives us purpose then we understand that it's not us that's going to solve all the problems. It takes the worry from us. It's not us that has to have all the answers. I don't understand why things happen in this world. I don't understand why things work out a certain way. But we got to get to the place where we're going and saying, my purpose in life is to honor and serve the Lord. And no matter what comes my way, what, 
what comes to, to cause me heartache or trouble. My purpose is to honor and serve the Lord in every aspect of life. Now, sometimes people will say, well, that's good for you, Pastor, but me. Listen, that's true for all of us. Our purpose is to honor and glorify the Lord in the way we live our lives, the way we share with others, the way we love people, the way we act towards people, the way we present ourselves. And, and when we do that, you don't have to worry about anything else. When we trust that the Lord is going to take care of those things in our life, then we don't have to worry about anything else. He's got it. <clears throat> Many times as we have um, gone on trips, whether it's with the church or as a family, I've been able to see um, the importance of making sure you know what direction you're going. Uh, I like to grab my uh, GPS and plug in the, the coordinates and it, it'll take me right to a location as long as I've updated the maps for, for that GPS. But what happens with that GPS, sometimes it gets to a dead end and it says turn left. There's no left to turn. Nowhere left to turn at all. And, and we, we mess up. But in planning our lives, we don't have all the answers of where to turn left, where to turn right. But we know who's driving the car. You see, when, when I would go as a young boy to trips to uh, go see my grandfather in North Carolina, when we would do that, I, I never drove um, to the mountains. I never drove uh, from, from the mountains all the way to, to Florida. Now, I had driven from Florida to Atlanta, and then my dad would drive the rest of the way. Or I have driven from the cabin to Atlanta, but my dad would drive the rest of the way. And, and so I've done that before. But what I hadn't done is drove the whole way. And when I, when I wasn't driving, I wasn't worried about where we were turning left, where we were turning right. And in our lives, when we realize that it's not us who's doing the driving in our life, it's the Lord, it takes the worry out of it. You don't have to worry about where to turn left, where to turn right, where to stop, where to, where to back up, where 100 feet, make a left. You don't have to worry about that. See, we're not trusting a, a GPS system. We're trusting the God who is powerful enough to secure our life with hope. And we do that through prayer, petition, and we really find peace when we put our connections in life towards the Lord. So I'd ask you to think about that tonight. I'd ask you to put your hope and trust in Him. I'd ask you to remember when you had, like we used to say on Wednesday nights when we were able to get together, if you had a bad week, don't worry. Sunday's coming. We'll be able to pray and, and study again together. And it seems hard to say that right now in our time of transition. But let me remind you, you could be in the Word no matter what. We could be in the Word and stop and grab a hold of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ and the privacy of our homes. What a great thing. God's Word has spread all over the Internet. God's Word has spread all over the place. And what may have been intended for something bad, God has taken it for good. I believe there's churches that are going to be stronger because of this. I believe that there are going to be people who are going to be stronger because they've spent time in the Word. And I also know, I've heard the statistics about where people are, are struggling more and they're expecting struggles to be harder and more difficult even after this time and we may have not seen the worst of it yet. Well, listen, stop. Do we really believe He's got the whole world in his hands. Do we really believe that God created the heavens and the earth and, 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 and that God had made a way for us by sending his son, Jesus Christ? If we believe that, then we got to trust him. we got to trust him. So the cure for anxiety, pray. Take those petitions of thanksgiving to him and then allow those two things to connect you with peace, the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with me this evening. Hope you have a great evening, and I'm going to pray with us, and then uh, we'll just close out this time together. Lord, we thank you for giving us a chance to be together this evening. Lord, I pray that you will help, empower us, encourage us, and, and really, Lord, just to allow us to see your hand at work in our lives. Um, Lord, even when we don't feel that you're working, we know that you're working, because we know who you are. So thank you for that tonight. I love you, and I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now listen, stay in the Word. The Word doesn't have to just be open inside a church building. Stay in the Word. And as we go through this time and transition back into a church setting uh, that is on campus, that is alive with people together, it's going to be so exciting. I hope you're ready. But as we move to that, I hope that you'll be prayed up 
and put up before the Lord because we as a church do not need to be on survival mode. We need to get into revival mode and begin to pray that people, even now, their hearts will be touched and they will come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Keep going and charge on. God bless you. We'll see you soon.